Christian Löffler is one of those artists whose music is so natural and melancholic that it doesn't even feel like it's coming out of a computer. It feels like it's performed and orchestrated. So that's the vibe we're aiming for. You can also grab this project file entirely for free using the link down in the description below. So you can walk along with me. Let's dive into the video. There is a track by Christian Löffler, which is called York. That's the track that I also used as a reference for the creation of this project file. And because Christian Löffler's style is so heavily oriented around the atmospheres, I started off with this texture loop over here. That's one of the most organic and natural ways to start off. On its own, it sounds like that. Added some EQ to reduce some of the high-end frequencies and a resonator to create some tonality to the atmosphere. All I did was readjust the frequency knob to around 300 hertz, added some decay, and changed the pitch of my note over here. Since we're composing this track in B minor, I'm gonna use the note B. Also reduce some of the dry wet here. Christian Neffler also really loves to use piano, chords, and strings, elements that you would usually find in an orchestra as well. For the strings, I originally used Omnisphere, and there's a preset called Bark Cello Sustain Arco, which on its own sounds like this. which is like a really melancholic, slow string sample. And since I'll be offering you this project file for free in the description, you don't have to have Omnisphere necessarily. You can also use this audio sample layer that I created as an addition. The only difference is that this sample has been resampled and you can use it without Omnisphere. So for this layer, I removed a lot of the low end frequencies. I added some auto pan for some extra movement and some filter automation for the intro, as you can see over here, and a bit more filter automation in the break, which we'll get back to later on. We're also using a reverb for this sample at about two seconds decay. Now we have our strings that sound like this, and our texture loop. And I also added another string layer that originally came from Omnisphere as well called Glacier Bowing. Didn't do a lot of processing for this one, just added a bit of low cut. And I also resampled this into another layer. So on its own, it sounds like this. The resampled layer sounds exactly the same. just to have some string element that fills the spectrum of the track every few bars over here. So our Two string elements and the organic texture from the intro sound like this. To add some more variation to the string, we have this string mellow layer over here, which again is also Omnisphere. It's the Brittle Bones preset this time, which on its own sounds like this. I also included a resampled layer of the strings over here. I just resampled the note and used the MIDI to draw in the notes that I want. Just removed some low end to clean up the sample a bit and removed some high end as well. Did some gain automation because I wanted some more dynamic in the sample. So the string sound almost sounds like it's going up and down. It's creating this waves of tension. Our string elements together with the atmosphere from the beginning sound like this. So it's a really organic and mellow, melancholic feeling that we're already getting here using these orchestral string sounds with a bit of atmosphere in the background. So let's get to the sub bass. And for the bass, I have a few different layers over here. You can see two of them are disabled and two are enabled because these ones are Serum, these ones are Ableton. 
If you don't have Serum, then I recreated an alternative for you to use over here. But in this case, we're gonna head into Serum really quick. And there's this preset called Base Simple Sub. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this layer over here and recreate the preset from scratch. And I'm gonna menu, initialize the preset. First of all, enable the sub oscillator, pitch it down an octave. We're also gonna be enabling oscillator A, which is our saw wave, pitch that down an octave, and our noise oscillator. What we wanna do is assign our macros to the individual oscillators so we get to control them. We're gonna create a quick envelope by increasing the decay a bit, the release, and decreasing the sustain. We're gonna mess around with these parameters in a minute. I'm gonna add some distortion, tube distortion. Assign a macro to this as well so we can control the distortion from here. And a cutoff filter. Increase the resonance a bit. Let's call our first macro add saw. Our second macro is gonna be called add noise. And macro three is going to be the distortion. Distort. Okay, so our sound on its own sounds like this. Gonna add some noise. And some distortion now. Now we can play around with the length of the sound. And we're also going to assign the noise and sub oscillator to our filters here. Can also add a bit of a saw layer inside. Added a bit of EQ here, reduce some of the high end frequencies and some of the muddy frequency around 100 to 200 hertz. And I also used a bit of multiband dynamics, reduce the bass frequency using this knob over here, playing around with these parameters and readjusting the amount just to get that sub bass frequency right. But for now, I'm going to delete this layer over here because we already have a sub bass layer over here. So the bass and the core melodic elements sound like this together. Here's the progression of the notes. I just paid attention to the original track by Christian Loeffler, and he uses a melody progression or bass progression that's similar to this one. And I recreated it just by feeling, by listening to the track, and just paid attention to what fits the vibe the most. You can see another layer over here called Subharmony. This is something that Christian Loeffler likes to do a lot, is he duplicates his bass layer and in control D. And you can see that this, this layer is basically just the same layer as this one, just pitched up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is a perfect fifth and another octave. So by holding shift arrow up, we pitch that up an octave, which makes 19 seven tones in total. Dope, really, really cool effect that adds so much more texture to the bass frequency. Since we don't need the low end frequency over here, we only need the harmonies. I removed a lot of the bass over here and some of those high frequencies in the intro. So you can see there's a bit of an automation going on. I wanted more of the white noise here, less of the white noise in the intro. Some reverb and together with the strings, this sounds like this. <laughs> What I like to do when I have the core melodic elements and the bass established, I like to move on to the drums. So for the drums, I start off with the kick because that's the main rhythmic element. Christian Loeffler's kicks are incredibly unique. They tend to sound very soft and subtle and don't take up a lot of space in the mix. They usually consist of this tom sound, which doesn't have too much of a transient, but a long decay, as you can see here. I'm gonna play you the kick sound by its own. For this kick, I originally used the tom sound, which sounds like this. You can find a few of these tom sounds in the JG Organic House pack. What you can do is just basically drag them in, created another version here, and you can mess around with the transient time over here. To get your kick right. But for this example, I'm going to be using this kick. So the sample that we're working with sounds like this. Previously without effects, it sounded like this. First of all, I removed some of the low end frequencies around 150 to 200 hertz and a bit of that clicky high end over here. 
Also added a frequency shifter, also known as shifter in Live 11, and that's where I got the kick that I desired. If you have a tom sample like this, it's usually a bit too high, and instead of pitching it down, I use shifter because it's a bit cleaner, and I mess around with this knob over here. Make sure it's on frequency and not pitch. So we went from this sample to this. Made it a bit more kicky. Kicky. <laughs> After that, I added a utility plugin just to take out the bass from the mono spectrum here. This is a trick I like to use to reduce the amount of bass in the stereo field just to keep the mix clean. And you can see there's a bit of automation going on here. So in the intro, I removed some of the bass frequencies and the clickiness and I added it back in in the drop part here. So our kick with the rest of the elements that we have so far sounds like this. Pretty cool. And you can hear there's a pumping effect going on. This is also known as sidechain. For that I added a compressor on the bass channel as well as another compressor on the sidechain ducking channel. So every element besides the drums the core drums are actually going into the sidechain channel and whatever's going in here is being reduced in volume by the kick. So we get that bit of a pumping effect. So I have a bit more sidechain going on for the bass and a bit less for the rest of the track because I want the bass to be more precisely tuned to the kick. It's really important that you don't go too crazy with sidechaining here because Christian Loeffler has a really natural style. He doesn't have that classic pumping effect that you would hear in other genres. His style is a bit softer and more lush, which is why you don't want to have a lot of sidechain in your tracks. So feel free to mess around with this threshold knob over here to get that sidechain right. And the other sidechain panel here. You see there's just a bit of gain reduction going on, just around like 2 or 3 dB. So make sure you keep your sidechain soft, that's really important if you want to nail his style. Then I added some shakers here. It's a basic shaker loop, just pre-shifted by 96 milliseconds, so I'm going to play that with the kick here. Without the pre-shift it would sound like this. Just messed around with the timing until I had the sound that I desired. You can see there's a plugin loaded here called Retro Color. This isn't entirely necessary, it just helps you get that gritty sound, adds a bit more noise, wobble, and inconsistencies to your sound. So with Retro Color it would sound like this. You can also see that I reduced a lot of the high-end frequencies here, removed the bass since we don't need that in this sample and just added a bit of delay. It's almost unnoticeable. But these shakers, together with the kick and the rest of the melodic elements, really fit well to each other. So I'm going to play that for you. Cool. There's another element that is really far in the background here called loose perk, loose percussion, just fills out the background textures a bit more. You can hear there's like a really loose clap inside and a lot of percussion that filled the drum loop a bit more. Our drums in total with the texture loop sounds like this. It's already pretty well filled out, but what we can do from here on is add another clap layer. So for the clap, I actually used three individual layers. So layer one sounds like this, layer two sounds like this, and this is how layer three sounds like. Right next to each clap, which plays on the second fourth beat, we have a reverse clap that shifts into every clap. So our claps in total sound like this. And what's incredibly important for the style of Christian Lefla is that you pre-shift the individual claps. You can see that I used this delay panel over here to pre-shift the individual clap samples can blend it in over here, like this. And I also messed around with the individual timing of the clap in here. So if you zoom in, you can see that every clap is slightly pre-shifted. It's not exactly on beat. This is an incredible tool if you want to add more organicness to your track. 
if you want to create the reverse clap layer, you can hit Control T, hit resampling, record input. And what we're going to do is record our claps, hit R to reverse. Then we're going to delete a section of the sample here and set our clap where we want to have it. So our claps sound like this. This would be too much of a sweep effect, so I'm going to crop the sample a bit more. This is perfect. Select the section and duplicate it. If you want to be really advanced, you can also pre-shift this reverse clap layer on every single beat. So this one's perhaps a bit more here, and this one would be pre-shifted a bit more like this, and our claps would sound like this. So you get that sweep effect every time the clap hits, which is a really great trick as well. So our drums in total with the loop sound like this. Our last drum element would be the hi-hats, which together sound like this. Pretty simple, not a lot going on. We have a main hat, just added a bit of EQ8 to reduce some of the high-end frequencies. So there's this plugin called Velocity. So if you head into Velocity over here inside MIDI effects, there's this plugin or this preset called Total Random. I just loaded it in over here. And what I did is just, I messed around with this random knob just to get different velocities of the sample playing each time. So every hi-hat has a different tonality to it or velocity. And I also messed around with this LFO plugin here, which you can find in Ableton as well. It's a Max for Live extension or Max for Live media effect. And what you can do is assign this knob here to any parameter of your liking. And this adds more movement to your sound. So in this case, I added it to the attack. So every single attack of the hi-hat sounds different. In this case, it's really subtle, almost not noticeable at all, but I like to add small little shifts like this into the tracks to create more organicness and more of a loose feeling. There's another layer, which is the same hi-hat duplicated. This layer is called hi-hat pitched. Basically the same sample, just pitched by 12 semitones, so an octave. I have the same effects over here and added some resonant frequencies using EQ. So hit Alt and drag our EQ. So we have this little boost here. This enables you to get a really tin or metallic sounding hi-hat. So our hats together sound like this. And our drums in total sound like this. With the bass. That's just lovely. I love it. So now we're going to add a melody, which sounds like this. For this, I added a preset called Saw Pure Muted Bass, which you can find in Ableton. So if you type in Saw Pure Muted Bass, you can head into Instruments and find this under Analog and Bass. So I just used that for the creation of this pluck. It's a really short pluck synthesizer that I like. You can see there's a MIDI progression. And I went into my Lotus Tunes Daydreamer pack and dragged in a MIDI file over here. I just dragged this on here and you can see I messed around with the pitch over here using this MIDI pitch effect. Without the arpeggiators, the sound would sound like this. If you want this to play the chords, then you can just increase the amount of voices here. But since I only want the pluck, I hit this back to mono and I added an arpeggiator, which made it sound like this. But just for the fun of it, I actually added another arpeggiator, which is basically doing the exact same 16th rhythm. But it just adds a bit more randomness to the notes. So if you're bored of using one arpeggiator, just duplicate it and see what comes out. For this layer, I added a bit of low cut, reduced a bit of the high frequencies over here and added some reverb as well with a decay of three seconds and also an auto filter for some high cut automation here. You can see in the break, we remove some of the high frequencies, so it goes down. There's a lot of reverb as well. We open up the filter and reduce the reverb amount. So we build tension like that. And there's another layer to this ARP, which is called Basic Bells, also an Ableton Live preset. And this just adds another texture to our existing MIDI ARP that we have here. Together with the arpeggio, they sound like this. 
added some OTT to bring out the high frequencies here. So without OTT, it will sound like this. Just a bit of OTT going on. Removing some of the low end frequencies, emphasizing the highs. And we also have a bit of a low cut automation here right before the break hits. So I also added a couple of transition sounds over here that sound like this. which you can also find in my Ambiente sample pack. So this is the track that we have. So that was the track inspired by Christian Loeffler. If you like this video, feel free to hit that like and subscribe. It helps my channel grow and it always helps me provide you more content like this. Remember that you can also grab this project file for free using the link down in the description below. And if you're also interested in sounds that sound like Christian Loeffler, Deep Organic House, you can also check out my Daydreamer Organic House production suite. So feel free to do that using the link down below. And as always, thank you for watching. Have fun producing. Peace.